Hello and welcome to our study in Daniel. We're in chapter 10. Uh, you can use the student guide or uh, certainly turn to your scripture and uh, Daniel chapter 10. Actually, 10, 11, and 12 is a three chapter or one a three chapter unit uh, all together. And uh, we're simply having the introduction today. Uh, the actual vision that uh, Daniel uh, heard and was explained to him is, comes in the next chapter, which we'll study next week. And, and then the instructions that what God wants Daniel to do as a result of this revelation we find in 12, 4 through 13. You'll notice that uh, I put chapter 11, verse 1, with today. And uh, uh, it, it goes, it's a kind of a transition verse between 10 and 11. And uh, basically, the outline for today is uh, the description of the angel in the first nine verses and the setting that uh, Daniel, uh, what he was doing, when, as in most other cases, it, it gives us a time and date, and, and then uh, uh, also the message of the angel that we have today. <clears throat> this, was, uh, this was an unusual period of time. Uh, and uh, the, the, the Israelites were returning all, already to Palestine to reestablish the nation of Israel. And, and it was a very fateful time for them as uh, it was so tenuous. And uh, it, it, I've been reading a, a book by Eisenhower, how, uh, the, how tenuous D-Day was, Normandy Beach, uh, all the conditions had to be uh, pretty close to a certain way, and uh, they had to establish a beachhead, and this is what Israel was doing, just establishing a beachhead, and we're going to study that today. So join me in prayer as we prepare to, to study this lesson. Father, we just pray today that we come to understand how important it is that uh, we establish a spiritual beachhead in places in terms of your kingdom, how your kingdom works very small and then <clears throat> grows, as the New Testament says. And Father, this is what your people were doing uh, back in uh, 536 B.C. And Father, we just ask that we understand that today. Teach us from this lesson. Teach us about prayer. Teach us about the spiritual struggles that are taking place behind the scenes. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Well, as we uh, start with Daniel uh, 10, verse 1, it says, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belshazzar. Notice that it goes back to this name that uh, was given to him by Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians. It has not been used uh, for several chapters now. He was known as Daniel. Uh, the queen mother even called him Daniel because of his reputation as a godly man, a man that honored God. But uh, it goes back to Belshazzar, maybe to establish the fact that Daniel was not going back to the promised land, uh, to the land of Canaan and Palestine. He, he, he did not go back. He was fixed as now in the Babylonian culture. He had responsibilities here whether he was too old or just his responsibilities kept him in place. But he is now called Belshazzar again. It was its message, this is uh, talking about the message, the revelation was true, and it concerned a great war, a great power. As we see that the central message about this whole vision is about war. It's about conflict, spiritual conflict, uh, physical conflict. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. Uh, it was a vision that, of, of seeing something as well as hearing something. Verse 2 says, at that time, or in these days, and we want to talk about how important these days are. Daniel mourned for three weeks. That word mourning is used uh, in terms of grief for a, a loved one that has passed from this life. And it's the same, uh, same idea of emotional involvement, mourning and grieving for three weeks. 
he said that he was so mourned and grieved over what was going on that he said, I, in verse 3, I ate no choice food or pleasant bread. In other words, it, it was just ordinary bread, just hard bread, water, basic things. Uh, no meat or wine touched my lips. I used no oils or lotions to, to soothe my body until uh, all at all until the three weeks were over. Uh, so what is, what is taking place? Why would Daniel be mourning and, and grieving so much so long what was taking place? Well, uh, some have said that we can actually identify the, the, the context. Uh, Zerubbabel, uh, uh, Shas Bazar, uh, um, also was uh, an individual involved, but it, Zerubbabel ended up at receiving the credit for leading 42,360 people back uh, about this time. Uh, he was in the line of David uh, to be ruler king. He was appointed governor of, uh, of, of Palestine or the area of Jerusalem. I think it went out about 25 as they say, meters, uh, um, kilometers. Uh, and uh, uh, Jeshua was uh, in line for the high priest. He represented the high priest. He was the high priest of, of the, the return group, of uh, this 42,360. And uh, they went and established about 537, 36. Uh, uh, they rebuilt the altar. They uh, Jerubbabel, it says, laid the foundation for the temple, and uh, uh, they began offering sacrifice. In fact, uh, if we if scholars have nailed down this exact date according to the lunar calendar, uh, and it's April 23rd, 536 BC, when Daniel had this vision. Now that, that, that's amazing to me that we could nail it down that much, but looking at all the calendars and everything, uh, it was during uh, Nisan, which is our March, April, it was t the time of the Passover, and what was happening was that the, the, these two individual leaders, they had been stopped by the Samaritans of that area, and, and they, they could no longer build the temple for about 15 years. They, God's program was delayed but not destroyed, as someone has said. And that's, that's tr always true. Uh, sometimes we, we get delayed in, in doing what we think God wants us to do. Uh, there's a time period involved. We don't understand always why uh, we get into these time delays that uh, it seemed very urgent to, <clears throat> to us. It was very urgent to them to rebuild the temple and to celebrate the, uh, the Passover, which they did. But that's as far as they could go. And, and Daniel was using this time for his own prayer time. You know, you and I, uh, is, if maybe you've grown up in a denomination that had prayer emphasis. Uh, my, our denomination that we have... Uh, that I've been a part of, you, many of you have been a part of. Um, ha we've had uh, the, the week of prayer for state missions and then international missions and then home missions and, and we've had revival times when we would be called to pray. Sometimes very specifically we'd have home prayer meetings. We would, we would be challenged in our own personal life to have moments of prayer, deep prayer. Well, Daniel was using this occasion around the Passover of Nisan, and it started on the 14th of Nisan and, and, and went for eight days. And we notice that this is ten days after, uh, uh, after the, uh, the, the Passover, for it says on verse, in verse 4, on the 24th day of the first month, that's Nisan, uh, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the, the Tigris. Now, uh, actually, uh, the, the, the word translated here as Tigris is uh, Hiddekel. 
And that's been an ancient name of Tigris, and it's even kind of like the form of what they call it today. And it means rapid Tigris, uh, the Tigris River. Uh, we don't know why Daniel was at the Tigris. Uh, Babylonia, Babylon, Babylon is on the Euphrates. So we don't know why he was there. Maybe an official business. Maybe God took him there in this vision. But, uh, it, but he was with friends, and, and so he was with others. And he says, as I was standing on the bank of the great river Tigris, I looked up, and there, were, were, there before me was a man dressed in linen. Now, anyone dressed in linen is, is dressed like a priest. And uh, uh, it says, with a belt of fine gold from uh, Uphaz, or actually that's another name for Ophir, Ophir, which we read about in Solomon and other places, was around his waist. And his body, verse 6, was like topaz. Uh, it was uh, crystal light, uh, kind of a yellowish, uh, golden color. His face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze. And his voice was like the roaring sound. Actually, that's the, the Hebrew there. The, the roaring sound of a tumult or a, a crowd, it's, been, it's a word describing rain, or even chariot wheels. It, it, it's, and it could be that the river added to that if it was a rapid flowing river at that point. Uh, anyway, it, 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 this is what the person's voice sounded like. What, what is the image that comes to your mind? What comes to my mind is the description in Revelation 1 when John saw the Lord. And this is almost, uh, it's a very similar uh, uh, description. But could it be the Lord when we later find that uh, this person, uh, or it seems like this person or maybe somebody else was held up by the spirit prince of Persia? How could it be the Lord? Well, some believe that this was a theophany, a, a revealing of God, but that then the, a different being, an angel, spoke to him. Uh, that's a possibility. But, we, but what we have here is uh, uh, a, a, a description. It's the time of the Passover, the 24th day of the first month of Nisan. Uh, it's March, April. And uh, he's, he's having a, uh, a, 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 uh, a very intense time. He's mourning. Uh, and, and suddenly, here he is in this vision, uh, the sound of this voice. Uh, this is a, a, a tumult, a, a roaring sound. In verse 7, I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves in fear. So what we have here is something like uh, happened in Acts with, uh, with uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, uh, when uh, the Lord visited him. People knew what was, that there was something taking place. They thought it thundered or something like that. But Paul was hearing from God. And, uh, and, and, and Daniel was hearing from God and, and no one else could hear it. They knew something was happening and they fled in terror. God's presence was on that place. If you've ever been uh, in a place where you felt the, just the powerful presence of God, you know that what, what that is, feels like. There's a heaviness. There's a sense and some, some are terrorized by it. And, and, and it, it's, it's not something to play around with uh, or be cavalier about. When you're in the presence of God, you pay attention. You listen. You, you don't make any smart remarks. You listen. You respect that heavy presence of God. In verse 7, I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. And, and they, they fled. Verse 8, So I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left, 
My mind turned deathly pale and I was helpless. Um, and yet, uh, or then I heard him speaking and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. Now, maybe he is describing the fact that he actually fainted from all of this. He, he could hear what was going on and yet he was also half unconscious about what was going on. <clears throat> and, and, and what we have here is something very similar to Isaiah 6. Uh, if you've read uh, Isaiah 6 about Isaiah receiving a call from God, a visitation from God, and saying, who will go uh, for us? Uh, God issuing an invitation to Isaiah. And Isaiah being completely overwhelmed, and uh, he, he stayed upright, but he said, I'm a man of unclean lips. And, and he said, I was, I, I had, I was helpless. I, 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 no strength was left in me. This is kind of a description of what Isaiah went through and others went through. John in Revelation went through. Uh, when, when God shows up, uh, we feel helpless. There's, there's a power there that we've not encountered very often, uh, if at all. And, and then it, it says, a hand touched me. Is this Gabriel? Gabriel came to him before. A hand touched me, verse 10, and set me trembling on my hands and knees. In other words, he was on the ground on his all fours. <clears throat> verse 11, he said, O Daniel, this is Gabriel speaking, or the angel, whoever it is. He said, O Daniel, you are uh, highly esteemed. Uh, greatly loved in some translations. Uh, the Hebrew actually says, a man of preciousness. You know, that has to be encouraging for any one of us to realize that God looks at his people and calls them precious. Um, and he, he has told us that we're the apple of his eye. I'm sure there's some that are, 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 uh, have a, a standing with God that is greater than others. Uh, there's, there's people that have a, a much greater standing than I do or anybody else. Uh, it, it, and, it, it, and, and these people are highly esteemed because of their faithfulness, their love, their commitment, their, their faith and trust in the living God. They have, a, they have a standing before God. And, and, and we know that Moses was like that. Uh, in fact, the Bible says that he was the most humble man on earth at the time he lived. You know, can you imagine his standing with God? And yet, God did not allow him to go in the promised land. Uh, we, we see that uh, it, was, it was Daniel... And in his intercession that, that God was so impressed with that he was later uh, spoken of as one of the great intercessors of the Bible. Uh, so he is called highly esteemed. And, and he says, consider carefully uh, the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up for I now have been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. He was able to stand. He was strengthened. And uh, uh, as it says, to consider or to understand, that is a word that, that is superior to just regular data or knowledge uh, or facts. But it, it, we understand it with the heart. In other words, it's, it's spiritually perceived and, and the value of it, the the the, the importance of it is recognized because it is spiritually discerned. Now that's what he's, he's talking about here. And then verse 12, he said, Then I, he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day you've set your heart. There, 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 Daniel is, is a spiritual person setting his heart to understand the things of God. And it's, that's the seed of true understanding, as, as Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him. You know, we, we cannot lean on our own understanding, but we, we must seek Him with our heart. 
And, and so he's, you set your heart to gain understanding and to humble yourself to submit to God and that you set your heart and, and, and humble yourself before the Lord your God. Your words were heard and I have come in response to them from the very first day. You know, there often uh, we, we assume, well, uh, God is not interested in my prayer. Well, that's, that's not the case. Uh, we, we see right here that from the very first day uh, that you set your heart, God wanted to give him understanding. But the prince, or as the, uh, the New Living Translation says, the spirit prince of the Persian kingdom uh, resisted, stood against uh, me 21 days. He delayed him. There was a supernatural struggle. You know, in a sense, the, this angel is pulling back the curtain and seeing, revealing the fact that there is a spiritual war. Remember, the message was war. The message of the vision is war. It's, it's, it's a battle. It's conflict. And we're seeing uh, the spiritual side of that conflict is that the spirit, of, the spirit prince of Persia resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, the archangel, one of the chief princes, spirit princes, came to help me or surround me or protect me because I was detained there with the king or the kings of Persia. Now I've come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come. So this is all, this is oriented toward the future. This is a time yet to come. Uh, Daniel is, is mourning, he's grieving, he's concerned that will, will these guys survive? I mean, will they build the temple? Will the nation be reestablished with that little beachhead of 40,000 people that, that went back? Will they, or will they be swallowed up and never heard from again in history? Well, God is assuring him, yes, Daniel, you can be assured of the future and the time to come, because I'm in charge of this. Well, verse, uh, let, me, let me back up to, uh, a second, stop here a second. Um, you know, as we, as we look at this, particularly uh, 12 through 14, as I mentioned, we have insight into the spiritual forces involved when a, a believer engages in protracted and earnest prayer. We don't, we don't know what that means. Um, you know, I, I, I guess it, I could say, at least on my part, I don't know about you, uh, on my part, uh, you know, there's, uh, th those times don't come very often. Maybe, maybe I need to spend more time earnestly uh, in prayer. I'm just admitting uh, that this may be a lack in my life. Uh, as, as James 5, 16 tells us that the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. It's powerful. The, we, and, and yet we don't understand everything that's taking place behind the scenes when we enter into that time, when we are very serious about a topic. I can, I can probably count on this hand. Uh, the number of times that I've entered into a very serious struggle in prayer for somebody or some situation, I can remember the things taking place in my life, the distractions, the, the, the struggle, the conflict emotionally, and, 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 and the, the outward uh, circumstances that I had to battle through in, in some of those situations. Well, what James tells us, it's, it's powerful and effective. And, and we may not realize the mighty forces that are unleashed when we really devote ourselves to intercession before the throne of grace. You know, uh, we, we see that uh, God sent a messenger to Daniel. And it, it was a very powerful being. That's, but the spirit of prince of Persia 
denied this messenger for three weeks. You know, I, I don't think we need to interpret this. In fact, I know we don't need to interpret this as God being powerless uh, on an equal basis even with evil forces. The Lord allows demons uh, and, and spirit forces, uh, certain limited powers of obstruction and rebellion, somewhat like he allows us human beings, uh, the freedom uh, of will, the the free will that we can exercise in our rebellion against God. Uh, God allows that. Um, but uh, we, we see that Satan has limitation. Job 1.12. Uh, God said to Satan, everything Job has in his hands, uh, you can deal with. But on the man himself, do not lay a finger. You see, God sets limits on evil powers even. And, and we, we see that Satan will not test us uh, uh, beyond what we can bear as believers. As, as 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, no temptation has taken you, but such as common men. But God will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able. God sets a limit on what we can deal with. God allowed the delay of the answer to Daniel possibly to, to develop something in, in Daniel's life. What if D Daniel had prayed only two weeks rather than three weeks? Would God have answered his prayer? I, I'm not sure about that. Uh, Daniel faithfully continued praying and fasting, and God's messenger eventually arrived and assisted was assisted by Michael the Archangel. Um, have you ever considered that your own prayer might be hindered by something that you cannot see? Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I think the general counsel to believers is that don't expect God always to answer quickly. Sometimes He does. Sometimes it's, it's not, when we pray, it's not of a kingdom significance. But other times when we do pray, especially for somebody's salvation, for some event to take place, for the protection of people around the world, praying for our missionaries during this time as they deal not only with coronavirus, but uh, evangelism and, and, and what they're there for in terms of international missions. We, we, we need to be praying, and, 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 and you know what? God acts on behalf of those. Who wait for him. He said, watch and pray. That's what Jesus said. We, we need to watch and pray. We need to realize that God hears immediately, but he doesn't always answer immediately um, because our prayers may be challenged. You know, Jesus knew the challenge of spiritual prayer. In, in Luke 18, 1, he says, we ought to pray and not lose heart. We ought to pray and not lose heart. Paul was, uh, he also realized uh, as in Ephesians chapter 6, as he said, put on the spiritual armor. And in prayer seems to be part of that armor. It says, with all prayer and petition. In other words, it suggests the thoroughness and the intensity of prayer. It says, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. In other words, in the power and in the sphere of the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert. A soldier, when, when they're standing duty, their, their job is to be aware if there's any enemy in the area uh, and watchful for enemy movement. It says, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. You know, when we're praying these type of prayers, we're entering into a spiritual realm where there's conflict. There's opposition. There's mighty forces at work, as Ephesians 6 tells us. You know, these verses, uh, they, they, they tell us to use several principles. Praying, standing firm, and being alert. We need to be alert at all times. Well, as we, as we move on, 
Verse 15, it says, While he was saying this to me, I bowed, I set my face toward the ground, and was speechless. Then one who looked like a man or a man's hand touched my lips. Now this is the third, this is a, a, another, another touch. Uh, someone has called these uh, touches, there's three touches in this chapter, celestial first aid. You know, he, uh, Daniel was just incapacitated. He, he needed help spiritually. So this man touched my lips and I opened my mouth and began to speak. I said to the one standing before me, I'm overcome. In other words, he, he had enough energy to say, I don't have any energy. I, I'm overcome with anguish because of the vision. Oh, my Lord, and I feel very helpless and weak. How can I, your servant, talk with you, my, oh, my Lord? My strength is gone and I can hardly breathe. That's how much his strength was gone. Verse 18, and again, the one who looked like a man touched me, that was the third touch, and gave me strength. Do not be afraid you who are greatly esteemed or highly loved or the man of preciousness. He said, peace, be strong now, be strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, speak, my Lord, since you have given me strength. You know, as we uh, think about verse 18 and 19, it's all about strength, isn't it? It's all about endurance and perseverance and, and, and walking with the Lord. Sometimes God has to strengthen us to even pray, to be spiritually interested in things, to kind of hang with Him, with the program. And... Uh, uh, you know, in, in sports, athletics, uh, you have strength coaches. Uh, that's a whole new business and field you can go into, uh, the weight room and, and workouts and stuff like that. But we, we need to be spiritually strengthened. We need, we need God's help in our life. Uh, Daniel felt weak and helpless, so he made it known to God's messengers. And through God's messengers, he brought peace and a sense of strength and wholeness. And, and God wants us to talk to him about our concerns. Uh, you know, God can bring us healing when we need it. He wants us to ask for it. He, he can bring us peace when we're in trouble, strength when we're weak, so we can trust God to minister to us as we seek to minister to other people. Um, okay. Uh, verse 20, um, so the angel said, do you know why I've come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the spirit prince of Persia, and when I go, the spirit prince of Greece will come. There's, there's battles coming, and, and this angel has dropped by, he's delivered his message, he says, I've got to get back to the conflict, because I'm going back into the battle, with the spirit the prince of Persia, and then there will be another battle with the spirit prince of Greece. I think it's interesting that the word prince here, it's, it's czar, just like the Russian czar, T-S-A-R. I, I, I find that interesting because it, it, it can also mean adversary, uh, as well as, as prince. And... Uh, uh, but uh, the same spelling, two different languages. Um, the prince of Persia, the prince of Greece will come. But uh, uh, first, verse 21, first I will tell you what is written or ordained in the book of truth. Evidently, this book contained the flow or the course of history. And this angel's message to Daniel was, God has this book. He has a plan. He has a plan A. It's written out. It's in, its, in a sense, it's ordained. It's all there. And God is in charge of history. As so often we said, history is his story. It's, it's something that is unfolding with God's ordaining. As we can trust him, uh, you know, Daniel had questions. Will, will this, this, this little group survive, this beachhead? 
And, and, and God is saying, yes, in so many ways. Yes, it will survive. It will survive all opposition, whatever that opposition is. And uh, uh, he says, no one supports me against them except Michael, your prince. And uh, it goes on, verse 11, uh, chapter 11, verse 1 says, um, in the, I like the New Jerusalem, it says, standing beside Michael, on whom I rely to give me support and to reinforce me. This, he's just completing his thought that I'm going back to Michael. No one supports me uh, against them except Michael, your prince. And, 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 and so we, we, we need to know that, um, that, that they are involved in a, a life and death struggle for the nations. Now, when we, when we think about uh, world demonic activity, we realize that, that angels have been given their domains. In fact, Ephesians 6 lays out a number of domains where, where uh, spirits are. And, 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 and so they, uh, we, we realize that they even talk about world rulers. Uh, uh, Revelation talks about war in heaven. And it talks about the prince of the air. I, we, we really don't know where these battles are taking place. But we know there is conflict, sometimes in heaven, sometimes in the air. Uh, Ephesians says, in the heavenly realm. We don't, we don't understand that, but we know it's taking place. Now, I, I, I want to just say one thing about spiritual conflict. You know, some people have gotten into battling with demons and praying against demons. We, we don't see that in the scripture anywhere. We don't see it here. Daniel didn't enter into that. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, it, it's advisable to seem that we, we need to stay out of that area and let God take care of that, where there is conflict going on. Uh, the angels are taking care of that. We need to be intercessors about what we can see and allow what we can't see be taken care of by the Lord who sees everything. And, uh, as we, as we look at this time in Daniel, this is an occasion for spiritual warfare, the restoration of the believing remnant, the beachhead, as we, I've mentioned, their survival, uh, living in obedience to the Scripture. They went back to set up the temple and to institute the, the sacrifice. And, you know, as we, as we look at all of this, uh, Someone has said that evangelism uh, in the New Testament has replaced warfare, physical warfare, in the Old Testament. I think that's a great difference between Christianity and Islam today, is that they, they, they're kind of locked into an Old Testament framework of battling physical war and, and, and confusing it with what the New Testament would call spiritual warfare or evangelism uh, and, and uh, prayer is our offensive weapon of choice. Prayer and faith. Prayer coupled with faith in our commander in chief. You know, faith is an assertion of trust. When I have faith in something, whether it's a chair or a table or a person, I'm asserting trust in that. I sit down trusting I depend on it, trusting. Uh, not too long ago, I got my pickup, trusting it was going to start, and it didn't. And it's been about seven weeks when I finally got it repaired. Uh, faith is an assertion of trust in someone or something, even in adverse circumstances. You know, we're not in this battle alone. Our God reigns, and He will be victorious. I have a list here. Uh, the, the Zerubbabel and, and Jeshua, they, they ran into the Samarit Samaritans and it stopped the building of the temple. For, they stopped the building of the temple for about 15 years until about 520 B.C. God's program can be delayed, but it cannot be destroyed. 
We see about 55 years later, Haman, during the time of Esther, tried to destroy Israel and all the Jews. And it backfired on him and it destroyed him. We see that in Nehemiah's time, about the mid-400s, about 444 B.C., Sanballat tried to stop Nehemiah from rebuilding. He was one of the Samaritans uh, still living there. We see uh, just several hundred years later, 167, Antiochus Epiphanes tried to destroy the religion of, of, of Israel and God's people. Time after time, God has taken us through that, and he will take us through our time that we're dealing with today as well. Would you join me as we close in prayer, and thank you for being with us today. Father, as we want to step up to the plate, spiritually speaking, in prayer, help us to be attuned to the fact that you use prayer. You use faithful people, people of faith, to enter into this struggle. All we have to do is just be faithful in prayer and persistent in prayer. To pray and not lose heart, as Jesus said. Father, help us do that as we walk with you day by day in faith, believing, trusting, asserting our trust uh, on you. We thank you for this. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.